When I was a kid, I had fantasies that I was going to save the world. I mean, I guess anybody who grew up so immersed in superhero culture is bound to concoct scenarios where some skill of theirs was the one thing standing between Earth and certain destruction. But I did it with gusto. Right. Anytime I got good at anything, I found myself trying to craft a daydream where that particular skill would be the deciding factor in the ultimate battle for human survival. Every video game I mastered was a last Starfighter-esque trial, and just around every corner, there was some arch-villain who was just about to cry out, I will blow the Earth's core right now unless somebody can nail the main guitar riff from Sweet Child of Mine. But as I grew older, I started to doubt that the world would ever provide me with an opportunity to prove that heroism. I, I came to dismiss all of those flights of imagination as the fanciful musings of a child and resigned myself to a world that would be quite capable of surviving without me. But then now happened. Right, look, I don't know why you became a skeptic. Hey, I don't know why I became a skeptic. I, I guess in some small way it was because we did want to save the world, right? We wanted to save it from wasting its money on homeopathy or wasting its time on prayer. Hardly befitting of Superman, but damn it, it's the heroism that we could offer. And now it's become so goddamn much more than that. Right now, it literally is the only thing standing between us and global disaster. The skeptics really are the superheroes now, and we're being called upon to face off against the closest thing to a supervillain that the world has to offer. And the stakes, I shit you not, are truth, justice, and the American way. I mean, consider what's actually happening right now. Credulity has been weaponized by a hostile foreign power. Vladimir Putin... A man who plays hockey the way the Queen of Hearts plays croquet. A man who employs chemists to find ways of turning his enemies blue. A man who couldn't be more cartoonishly evil without a Persian cat to absently stroke as he monologues about the inevitability of our demise. Studied the blueprints of democracy and found a weak spot. So he gathered together a group of minions who linguistic convention as though it were paving the way for a fantasy story metaphor this whole fucking time has dubbed trolls and set them to work against our kingdom. And in act one, the blitzkrieg of disinformation brought us to our knees. It turned us against each other and left us incapable of choosing a leader smart enough to tie his shoes without getting a finger caught in the fucking knot. Right. The supervillain's plan worked better than he possibly could have imagined. So obviously he's ramping up to do it a second time. But this time he knows how well the weapon works. This time he can bring down the walls all together. Of course, all the systems and institutions that would normally take care of this kind of shit are turning a blind eye to it. The federal government, beholden as it is to the bad guy, is slow walking any effort to safeguard democracy. The traditional arbiters of social discourse have been antiquated by social media companies that approve of a medium amount of lying. Hell, we even broke down and fired the impeachment cannon at this problem and the shell just bounced right the fuck off of it. It would seem at a glance that nothing is standing in the way of bullshit's ultimate victory. But unbeknownst to most, an elite group has been training for years battling exactly this enemy. They've been on the front lines of this battle for years going toe to toe with bullshit's army. The blade in their hand is Occam's razor and Occam's razor glows blue in the presence of trolls. We've been preparing for this. We didn't know what we were preparing for, but it doesn't matter now. We might not be the hero Gotham deserves, but damn it if we're not the one it needs right now. It needs people who know how to fact check a news item on the fly. It needs people who know how to discern between conspiracy theories and legitimate connections. And most of all, it needs people who know how to engage with the victims of disinformation and convince them of the truth. And whether you've been practicing against flat earthers, anti-vaxxers, creationists, or climate change deniers, you've been honing the only skill that that can save democracy, and it's time for you to be a fucking superhero. Now, to be perfectly honest, I'm a little disappointed on how we're doing so far, right? I've seen an awful lot of self-identified skeptics already on social media engaging in some pretty bad shit, crazy conspiracy thinking. As soon as the results were late coming in from the Iowa caucuses, I saw a lot of people violating the ever-loving fuck out of all the principles of good skepticism to craft or promote silly theories of dark forces and shit. Right. And more recently, I've seen a lot of so-called rationalists sharing math that can be debunked with half a Google. I, I, I've seen online exchanges on pages devoted to skepticism that employ every logical fallacy I could name with a gun to my head. In other words, 
I've seen a lot of people wearing the label skeptic without exactly earning it. And the problem most of the time is hubris, right? Like if you think you're too smart to be fooled, you're wrong. And you're not as smart as you think. Nobody's too smart to be fooled. You can employ a more or less foolproof process to verify shit, but you're only as good as your adherence to that process. You know, we have a tendency to think of misinformation as being these ridiculous conspiracy theories about Hillary Clinton's satanic child prostitution ping pong parlor. But this shit runs the full spectrum of sophistication, right? There's plenty of bullshit that will pass the smell test. Unless you're vetting the information or the source, you will get fooled. And we can't afford that shit because we need to be part of the solution. We already have enough problems. There's still time for us to win this fight. Right. We need skeptics in it for the long haul, because the closer we get to Election Day, the more tiresome and difficult this is going to get. At a certain point, we're all going to want to check out and leave the social media conversations to the trolls. But we have to fight this one out. There is too much at stake here. This is the biggest test that skepticism has ever faced. And if we fuck it up bad enough, it'll turn out to have been our final exam.